It was launched over four decades ago. Built with technology older than most smartphones. And yet, Voyager 2 has just delivered one of the most unsettling confirmations in space science. While humanity's eyes are locked on Mars and the Moon, this tiny spacecraft has quietly slipped into a region no one had truly seen before. And what it discovered? A boundary, a wall, a shift so precise and so dramatic proves that what we call the edge of the solar system is far more real and far more dangerous than anyone dared to admit. Join us on this cosmic journey as we explore the Voyager 2 just made an impossible encounter at the edge of the solar system. Let's find out. Most people think space is just emptiness, a void without structure. But Voyager 2 has just confirmed something terrifying. Space isn't empty. It's structured, layered and guarded. And the line we just crossed? It changes everything we thought we knew. Incredibly, Voyager 2 was launched in 1977. It was designed to last five years. Ten, if we were lucky. Instead, it survived for nearly half a century, defying solar radiation, cosmic dust, freezing temperatures, and the vast nothingness between planets. And yet, it still speaks to us, whispering back secrets from the darkest reaches of our system. As of now, Voyager 2 has joined its twin, Voyager 1, in interstellar space, the first human-made object to reach the boundary where the solar system ends and the unknown begins. This isn't just poetic, it's scientific. NASA detected sudden, precise changes in plasma density, temperature, and radiation, marking what can only be described as a physical boundary. A shift so sharp, it's as if the spacecraft passed through an invisible membrane separating us from the greater galaxy. What's more astonishing is that these changes weren't gradual. They happened fast, sharp, immediate, almost like passing through a gate. What Voyager 2 found out their challenges, our very concept of space. We used to think the heliosphere, the bubble created by the sun's magnetic field, faded gradually into the galactic medium. But Voyager 2 proved otherwise. There's a clear measurable increase in temperature, a sudden spike in cosmic radiation, and an unexpected shift in magnetic alignment. And here's the part that stuns scientists the most. The sun's magnetic field and the interstellar magnetic field are aligned perfectly. That wasn't supposed to happen. It defies models we've trusted for decades. The moment Voyager 2 crossed into interstellar space, it recorded a jump in galactic cosmic rays by nearly 70%. It's as if the heliosphere wasn't just a bubble, but a shield. A defensive shell surrounding our solar system, blocking out the violent radiation of the galaxy. And once you step outside, that protection disappears. Space becomes louder, hotter, denser. Not physically dense, of course, but energetically. Voyager wasn't just drifting into the void. It was entering a storm zone. Another strange detail Voyager 2 confirmed is that the shape of the heliosphere isn't uniform. It's not a perfect sphere. It's warped, pulsing, alive. Every 11 years, the sun goes through a magnetic cycle. Its field expands and contracts like a heartbeat. Scientists now believe that this breathing causes the edges of our solar system to fluctuate grow, shrink, and even break open in places. Imagine a living cell with a soft membrane, constantly shifting. That's our solar system. And depending on when and where a spacecraft crosses it, the boundary is different. Voyager 1 crossed it at 119 astronomical units, but Voyager 2 crossed it at 121 astronomical units. And what they experienced was not the same. Different temperatures, different particle densities, different energy flows, that suggests this boundary isn't fixed. 
It's a moving, living frontier. Shaped by solar winds and galactic forces, we still barely understand. And if it's alive, we have to ask, what else is living out there with it? As Voyager 2 moves further away, its signal grows weaker. Its power source, an RTG nuclear battery, will die by 2025. And with it, one of humanity's greatest messengers will fall silent forever. On board, it carries the famous Golden Record, a disc encoded with Earth's languages, music, images, and maps of our location, a cosmic greeting card sent blindly into the void. But after what we've learned, was that why we now know this region of space is not passive, it's active, it has structure, it has pressure, it reacts to movement, and still, we left a beacon pointing directly to Earth. Some call it bold, others call it reckless. But either way, we can't take it back. Voyager 2 is now part of the stars, drifting into a realm where physics bends, radiation grows, and even space itself begins to whisper differently. And though we may never hear from it again, its final confirmation is hauntingly clear. We're not drifting into nothing. We're passing through something. While scientists publicly praised Voyager 2's entry into interstellar space as a technical milestone, some couldn't help but notice the nature of the transition, the sudden spike in radiation, the shift in magnetic fields, the plasma density wall. It all seemed too precise, too abrupt. Not like a slow drift into space, but a line that had been drawn, like a sensor tripwire. What if the heliosphere isn't just a protective shell, but a monitored perimeter, a checkpoint of sorts? The idea sounds like science fiction, until you consider that Earth is one of the few planets known to support life. And the moment we finally stepped outside our bubble, space reacted. It wasn't gradual. It was instant. As if something out there noticed. As if we triggered something simply by leaving. One of the lesser-known facts about Voyager 2 is that even now, it continues to send back strange data. Whispers, anomalies, electromagnetic spikes that don't always make sense. While many of these fluctuations are attributed to distant cosmic events or instrumentation aging, a few stand out. In 2019, Voyager 2 experienced a temporary blackout. Its instruments shut down without explanation and then restarted hours later as if rebooted. Engineers called it a glitch. But what kind of glitch powers down a spacecraft for hours and then revives it without damage? Some have speculated it could have been interference, not from inside the craft, but from the space around it. Could we be receiving subtle signals from an environment we don't yet comprehend? Could Voyager 2 be interacting with something out there that we're still unequipped to detect? Maybe we're not just listening into the void. Maybe something is listening back. After analyzing the data from both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, researchers notice something strange. The numbers don't fully align. The distances at which each probe crossed the heliopause were different not by a little, but by significant margins. Their readings on plasma pressure, density, and temperature painted two different pictures of what should have been the same frontier. Some chalk this up to solar cycles, others to directionality. But a few began whispering about a far more unnerving possibility, that the edge of our solar system is not the same in every direction. And perhaps more disturbingly, it adapts. What if the boundary Voyager cross is not a fixed membrane, but a reactive structure? What if it reshapes, fluctuates, even responds to approach? If that's the case, then Voyager 2 didn't just cross a border. It may have encountered an interface, a reactive zone between our system and something much older, more complex, and far beyond our understanding. 
Voyager 2 is now billions of kilometers from home, drifting into deep space with no fuel left to maneuver, no camera to capture images, and only a fading signal that grows weaker each day. But what it's confirmed about the structure, energy, and boundaries of our solar system has implications far beyond science. It forces us to rethink space, not as a passive stage, but as a system with architecture, patterns, and behavior. And in doing so, it opens up a terrifying question. Have we just begun to knock on a cosmic door we were never meant to find? Because if the edge of the solar system reacts, aligns, and shifts, then perhaps we've been inside something all along, protected, isolated, watched. We don't know. But Voyager 2 didn't just drift into the unknown. It confirmed that the unknown is much more structured and aware than we imagined. For decades, we believed the edge of the solar system was just a number, a distance, a point in the dark. But Voyager 2 has shattered that illusion. It didn't just leave our system. It didn't just float beyond the planets. It crossed a boundary. Real. Measurable. Reactive. And what it found on the other side is nothing like what we expected. The universe we now know isn't silent. It pulses. It shifts. It pushes back. It listens. And in that moment, when Voyager 2 passed through a magnetic wall, when radiation spiked and the laws of physics twisted, it confirmed something that many scientists fear to say out loud. Space has structure. Space has rules. And maybe, just maybe, it has sentries. We were never drifting in chaos. We were enclosed. And now, for the first time, one of us has stepped outside. So now the question isn't what lies beyond the edge. It's who built the edge in the first place. Let us know what you think in the comments. Was Voyager 2 simply mapping cosmic phenomena? Or did it stumble into something much older? Something watching? Is the universe a place we explore? Or a system we're only beginning to understand? And if you believe this is just the beginning, if you feel that the truth about our place in the cosmos is far stranger than fiction, subscribe and turn on notifications. Because we're not just telling stories here, we're unraveling signals. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Please tell us your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries, signing off.